Hello and good morning. CSI 257 students at the at Anne Arundel Community College for the fall 2014 semester for CSI 257 which is the Scaling Networks course, the third course of four in the Cisco Networking Academy curriculum. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 5.1.5.7 and this continues to build on the OSPF work we've been doing with the previous two activities. And then the subsequent packet tracer that we'll be doing is the skills integration challenge that has us pull all of this information together. So let's jump into this activity here. So in this activity, OSPF is already configured and on all end devices and they've got full connectivity. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be changing the hello interval, the dead interval, and it looks like the bandwidth settings and setting up authentication. So step number two, so we're gonna verify that PCs can ping the web server first. So let's go ahead and take a look at PC3 here and make sure that PC3 can ping out to 64.100.1.2. And as we might expect, the first request times out because it had to ARP out and then we've got success. All right, so we'll te we've will we tested from PC3. We're not gonna test all three PCs, so let's jump into router one here. I'm gonna make the router one window a little larger and we're gonna come to the CLI. All right, so it's asking us to make some changes. So we're gonna go from user exec mode into privilege exec and then into global config mode where we're going to go into interface sub configuration mode for serial 000 and it's asking us to change the IP OSPF hello interval and serial 000 on router 1 is and let's mouse over here and see if it gives us any information it's not cooperating here and showing us which interface is serial 000 Take a look up here. Router 1, it's 172.16.3.1. So it looks like it's going to go to router 2. So what we want to do is on router 2, we're going to go from user exec to privilege exec. Whoops. With the enable command, and then we're going to type in debug IP OSPF adjacency to see if we see anything of interest here when we change these settings. All right, so back to router one where we're gonna go ahead and say IP OSPF hello interval and we're gonna change it to 15, right? And then we're gonna say IP OSPF dead interval and we're gonna change that to 60. And so if I do a do show int serial zero zero, oops, serial zero zero zero, we can see here that it gives us a lot of information about the interface, right? Shows us the reli reliability, the transmit load, the receive load, the MTU size, the bandwidth, the, the delay. And as you can see, we're now gonna receive an error message here. It says process one on serial 000 from full to down, neighbor down, dead time expired. And then over here it says interface down or detached. So let's see what router two showed, if it showed us anything interesting or gave us any additional information. All right, so it just simply shows us the dead timer has expired. So if I do a show IP OSPF neighbors, I no longer have a relationship out that serial 000 interface. So the connection with R2 did fail. Both sides need to have the same timers in order for the adjacency to be maintained. And so on router two, if I do a show IP OSPF database, you can see that we have no information about router one. So let's go ahead and type end here. All right, so it says, adjust the timers on R2. So we're going to come over here to R2, and we're going to say 
from Privilege Exec to Global Config Interface Serial 000 Sub Configuration Mode IP OSPF Hello Interval. And you can see it's a 16 bit value, and the values are 1 to 65, 535. So we'll go ahead and say 15 so that it matches. And then we're also going to say IP OSPF dead interval, and we'll make it match to 60. All right, and so let's see if anything happens here. We're going to have to give it a few seconds. Again, if I do a do show int serial 000, you can see that it gives us some information. Again, we're going to be manipulating this. Whoops. We're going to be manipulating the, the bandwidth setting here shortly, right? But it gives us a lot of additional information, input errors, output errors. All right, so database descriptor packets are going back and forth. LSAs are being built. And the adjacency is back up. So now if I do a do, I'm sorry, if I do a show IP OSPF neighbors, now we do see router one, which is 172.16.3.1, whereas before, when we ran that same command, you'll notice that here it didn't show up, and that was when the adjacency was down. All right, so the adjacency has been established. So router one and router two are speaking with each other again. So now let's adjust the bandwidth setting on router one. So trace the path between PC1 and the web server located at 64.1.64.100.1.2. So here's the PC, and I'm going to say trace RT to 64.100.1.2. And you'll notice the first hop that it takes is its default gateway, 172.16.1.1. It then goes to 172.16.3.2. This is router 2, which is right up here. It then jumps out to the link between router 2 and the internet. And then it gets to the web server. So let's go ahead now, change the bandwidth setting on router one and let's see how that impacts things so on the router one serial 000 interface and that's the interface that it's going out the traffic was tracing out through to get to router two so we'll go from privilege exec to global config mode and i'm going to say interface serial 000 and we're going to issue the bandwidth command and so it's going to be bandwidth and if i do a question mark you can see it's bandwidth it's in kilobits so we're going to say 64 kilobits a second, right? And so this is definitely going to change the attractiveness of that link, the serial link between router 1 and router 2. So if I do a do show interface serial 000 now, you'll notice that the bandwidth shows 64 kilobits. However, remember when we previously ran this command, it showed the default for a serial link of 1,544 kilobits a second. So we've lowered that cost. I shouldn't say lowered the cost. We've lowered the bandwidth to 64 kilobits. And what this is going to do is this is going to increase the, uh, the cost of that link. And so what it's asking us to do now, it says after we've made that change, now trace the path from PC1, and let me see if I can make this any larger here. There we go. Now trace the path, and what should happen is it should not jump to router two. It should, from router one to router two, it should go from router one, which it does, and it jumps over to router three, and then it goes to router two. And so on router one, if I do a Let's just end out here. Show IP route, and we're going to say two or we'll say 64.100.1.2. It shows that the network is not in the table. Let's do um, the 209. Let's do show IP route, and is that 209 is not in the table either? So I guess we'll just do it out to router two. So if I do show IP route 172.16.3.2. You can see that it shows it's directly connected, 
All right, the distance is zero and the metric is zero and it's via a connected interface. So if I do show IP OSPF route or show IP route OSPF, you can see that here are the OSPF learn routes. So we've got the administrative distance, but then we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the cost, right, or the metric to get to that interface. And so router one sees that its next hop to get to, uh, excuse me, the default route over on router three is actually less cost than it is to go to router two which is why the traffic is no longer going directly up to router 2 which would obviously be the shorter path you can see here that the cost is now 129 so if I go back into that interface serial 000 and I say bandwidth 1544 and then I do a do show IP route OSPF and it looks like it hasn't picked it up yet Let's do a do clear IP OSPF proc. So we'll reset everything here. Do show IP route OSPF. <clears throat> there we go. All right. And so as you can see, the cost now is 65 to get to router 2, which is lower, i.e. it's better, than the cost to go out these other paths, right? So when we set the interface to a bandwidth of 64, what we're doing is we're basically saying that that link is less preferable, and you can see it hasn't taken effect yet, and there it goes, that that link is less preferable, this link right here, as, com as compared to this link right here. All right, so that's a little traffic engineering there at layer three. So now let's enable the I, or I'm sorry, enable OSPF authentication on the serial interfaces. So on router one, we're going to say router OSPF one, and we're going to say area zero authentication. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Authentication message digest, and then we're going to go into the interface serial. <coughs> Zero, zero, zero. Once we're in the interface, we're going to go ahead and say IP OSPF message digest key one MD5 and then R1-R2. And so what we're doing here is we're telling OSPF that we want to have authentication between, whoops, this is my five there, MD5, there we go. We want to have authentication, something to authenticate the sessions between each of these routers. So right here we're doing between router one and router two. We're actually going to go ahead and do the same thing between router one and router three. So as you can see, um, the interface has now gone down because router two is not configured for authentication. So if I do a do show um, IP interface brief, our link over to router three is going to be serial 001. So if I go int serial 001, and we are going to issue the same command, IP OSPF message digest key is MD5, and it's going to be R1 to R3, right? So, and did I mistype something? MD5 message digest key. Oh, I apologize, key ID. So the key ID is 1MD5 and then R1 to R3. And now it's asking us to go ahead and jump over to routers 2 and 3 and to do the same thing. So let's go conf t int serial 000 IP OSPF message digest key 1 MD5 and it's R1 to R2. And so I'm going to hit enter and we'll wait here a couple seconds because what we should see is that router one and router two are going to begin speaking with each other again. Let's pull that back up. And over here, you can see the interfaces are down. So we go from user exec into privilege exec into global config. And you know what? I left off, I apologize, on router two here. 
I need to hop into the router OSPF1 and get the area zero authentication in there. Authentication, message digest. There we go. All right, so we should see some activity there on router three, and there we go. So it's actually moving to full on the serial one uh, zero 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 interface. So let's come back and let's go into the um, do show IP interface brief. And we're going to be looking at serial 001, serial 001. We're going to do the same thing. So it's IP, OSPF, message digest key 1, MD5. And this is going to be R2 to R3. And we're going to set that up the same way. So we'll come over here to R3, <clears throat> do show IP interface brief. And let's make this a little larger here so it's a little easier to read. There we go. Pull this back in here. Okay, so we're going to be changing serial 000 and 001. So interface, and first let's get into the router OSPF1, and we're going to do area zero, whoops, area zero, authentication, message digest, and then we're going to jump into the interfaces, serial 000, and we're going to say IP OSPF message digest key and this is going to be key one MD5 and the serial 000 link goes over to router 1 so we're going to say R1 to R3 alright then we'll go to int serial 001 and we're going to say IP OSPF message digest key 1 MD5 R2 to R3 you'll notice that the neighbor relationship between 3 and 1 came up and we should see the exact same thing here for router 2 and we do and there it is alright so now if I do a show IP OSPF interface oh whoops show IP OSPF interface and this is the command that you're gonna run to come in and take a look at the cost of the link the type of the link so the cost is 64 the type is a point-to-point -point link. We can also see the hello timers and the dead timers here. And one thing to notice is that they can be different on different interfaces. However, best practice is that those timers were chosen for a specific reason. So chances are you should not be in there uh, tweaking those unless you've got a really, really good reason. So show IP OSPF interface, right? And we've got a lot of information here it tells us the state the priority for the DRBDR election the designated router ID so show IP OSPF interface is a great command alright so this wraps up setting up authentication changing the hello and the dead interval as well as changing the bandwidth on an interface to do a little traffic engineering to force the traffic to go a different direction okay Hopefully this cleared up any confusion you have, and the, the follow-on is going to be the, uh, the skills integration challenge, which is going to pull all of this together. It's actually a really nice exercise. All right, have a great day.